That's a, when you were talking, lunging over our chin moving forward, I guess. One of the things out, I mean, other than that bad example that I'd seen uh, on videos was, uh, I think it was Bellinger actually talking on MLB about keeping his chin over his belt buckle. Right, exactly the same thing with the, the, the bat. And for me, that helped me, like you were saying in older videos, talking about moving into the staircase or all of it being a one piece stride rather than, I mean, even looking at my swings today, of uh, reach and go. Reach and roll. Right. And that's what I said, a uh, good friend of mine, Craig Hyatt, with his younger players, does all sorts of little moves to kind of make them feel centered because maybe we're going to have a little bit of tolerance either way off center. But the more we think about maintaining the center and the backside in a line, the better we're going to have an ability to carry that line and keep it pretty continuous to our 50 50 where we want to begin our swing from. How much better is your swing feeling? Oh, I love it. It's like night and day. Like just being able to like stay through the ball. And I, I did a couple when you ride to it unintentionally before you think about it. Cause it just started happening. You see it, you get to your position. It's a little slower. You get out in front, but your hands stay through the plane. It's one of those that really helps you find where your plane's at. I think if you're struggling to see your plane, if you get into a ride, you can really see what you're doing. And, and then you start thinking like we talked about doing your chaos drills. Mm -hmm. And we did just three with variants, but we can do a lot and we can teach them a lot as long as they take the drill seriously. Because at the college level, they're going to be doing a lot of self work with their teammates. But what has to happen, everybody has to be on the same line. This is not just, you know, funding games, it's not video games. The flipper has to know, the front toss has to know, we're working on something here. The hitter has to know, there's always some intent. And the intent necessarily isn't trying to hit them all hard. It's not about exit it. velocity, it's about how's my body moving? And being able to put those fixes on me. I'm looking forward to all the variants you guys come up with, all the drills, because you guys can come up with something that's going to be just money for, you know, a thousand meters downstream. Because you, as you start thinking along these lines, you know, we've watched over the last two days after the cage and, and in here, we're watching everything evolve pretty fast. And, you know, as coaches, people don't understand that there's a big responsibility we have. You know, every one of your players is relying on your information to make them better. And I think one of the bad things that happens is Kids get used to ineffective coaching, shall we say. Or they listen to social media and you get all these people espousing all sorts of different theories and, and ideas and swing. And they see this and they see everybody, oh, they're following this, oh, look at this. And so they basically get a little bit of what I call confused. Or they start buying into something else. So they automatically almost start dismissing coaches and I'm not gonna say every coach is good. You know, I can't say that. But if a coach is working to get you in a better position, just like we're talking about, to affect a very consistent swing that unlocks your posterior chain, allows you to do everything, that's gotta make sense to these young players. But we've talked about there's some resistance sometimes, but it really comes down to, as they work to understand the process, understand what their intent is in practice, you know, I have no doubt. And there's going to be, you know, we're going to be rocking with San Diego. Hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's up to you guys. But I have no doubt. I mean, and I, like I said, we've talked about the epiphanies. You know, it's great to have, you know, coaches feel the epiphany. It's great to have coach go, why didn't I have this five years ago? Why didn't I have this 10 years ago? So, but that's a gift you get to give to not only this group, the next group and it carried forward. So I think powerful statements you get to make to the coach.